What up y'all, Faraz here and this is the Twice Over Film Club. Today we got our full episode on City of God. Our tally for this does not vary that much, it's between a 76 and a 79. Honestly that just means all the elements of this movie were well done. Make sure to check out the twiceover.com and see what your tally is by playing around with the tally tool and rearranging the different elements in different orders. For some movies it makes a significant difference. Also, to keep up to date with what we're watching, follow us at the twice over on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or Letterboxd. On Tuesdays, we announce what we're watching that week. All right, here's our City of God episode with myself, Farhan, and Fahad. All right, so this was technically a dis uh, suggestion by Sabine, City of God, but <laughs> she never like, actually sat down and watched it again. Really? When's the last time you guys watched it? Last time we watched it, maybe like three, four years ago. I rewatched it obviously to do this okay. podcast. Um, I've seen it now like three or four times at least. But yeah, in terms of like thoughts or anything, she doesn't have anything crazy, man. She just thinks it's a good movie, and then we should have done it by now. So mm -hmm. we're doing mm -hmm. it. Okay. So I, f I first watched it in what like two thousand eight or something, and this is my second rewatch. My or my first rewatch, first rewatch. I'm pretty sure, Farn. We watched this in high school, right? I think we watched it. I watched it first with you, but I've watched this movie probably ten times, man. What? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've pr I watch this movie a lot. How and why? It's not like a movie that just comes on TV. You must have made the effort to just sit down. Oh and yeah. Like, okay, I'm gonna watch. Dude, I don't movie. watch. I don't remember the last time I've seen a movie on TV. I don't think I've, I don't have TV. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is TV? What dude? is TV? I don't well, know. Well, the thing is, I feel like City of God. I feel like has always been available on like a streaming service. It's like right now, it's on HBO Max, yeah. but I feel like it was on yeah. Netflix for a long time. It was. It was. It was yeah. on like Amazon Prime for a long. Like it's always available somewhere. All right, guys, so let's get going with our scores. Narrative score. My narrative score here is 90. Uh, I give it a 65. I am at a 90. Ooh, so I'm but a the I'm outlier. Surprised. Uh, 65? Yeah. Really? yeah. Very low. Let me explain myself. Go ahead. Okay. I didn't care for the sure. plot. That's basically it. The protagonist was basically an outsider to the central conflict between the two gangs. And then on top of that, I thought the direction was kind of amateurish with like a lot of questionable choices from like funky mm. camera angles, like those Dutch <laughs> angles, to the use of slow mo and other stylized techniques that just didn't work well. So, you didn't think that those were purposeful? No. Okay, so they I, were done on purpose. They were done on purpose. I will agree with Fahad on one point though. Those like. Uh, those slow mos, those even like sound effects, even of the of of a camera, because they're just pushing the photography theme quite a bit. Like it sent, it felt a little amateur, uh, a little distracting. But I would say that yeah, it was obviously purposeful. Um, I didn't like that as much as I. I mean, I just noticed it more now than I have before in my previous watches. As far as the story, I, I liked it. It's nice and simple. Um, and we so Fahad, like the thing is, we are uh. We're obviously outsiders to this world anyway. So Rocket, the protagonist, who is narrating the movie for us, I thought that was a very apt choice to, uh, you know, present the story to an outsider like us. Yeah. But he didn't have any uh, story for himself. Like his whole thing was uh, becoming a photographer, right, with a newspaper, which was a small plot line, but it didn't have any sort of conflict within it. Right. So that's why I felt disinterested. He's somebody in the slums who wants nothing to do with with the, the violence that yeah. just surrounds him and, and he's just he's trying to be successful in yeah and while that's admirable outside of all of that stuff you know? while that's admirable it's admirable it's kind of boring you know i was okay. more interested in the gangs and what was going on there even though it was like morally reprehensible but i don't know so fahad okay. your your critique here reminds me of like what i didn't like about sicario because we get the point of view from uh emily blunt oh character. yeah yeah it's from and someone like, that's naive and like she's an outsider totally to the not world. interesting yeah she's not interesting at all whereas like the gangs that she's like they, they would have been a more better point of view for an audience but i don't know i think in this one the, the main character rocket was close enough to the action that it worked mm -hmm. okay let's go on to the writing i gave this an 80 same here i give it a 75 so pretty close i feel like i should preface actually before we go any further into saying that you're talking about like some of the stuff being amateurish most of the actors in this movie are not trained actors yeah they're actually from the city of god mm -hmm. yeah they're from Definitely. the favelas yeah and some of this some of the shots are actually shot by rocket the actual dude i will also say this uh the two directors fernando uh, Morales, he 
it was like an advertising guy, like in marketing, and、mm. he did this film. And then his,、uh, the co-director Katya Lund, she did a documentary on like the City of God, like in the nineties, and that's why you have like this very documentary feel or look to、right. the movie. We'll talk about that in aesthetics, but th- I guess what along with the actors, even like the directors weren't like seasoned. You know, film directors.、Mm-hmm. Okay. Which honestly, it added a lot of authenticity, and it worked for this movie, in my opinion. So, but for things like writing, you know, it's nothing spectacular. I I felt, but it is.、Um, a lot of it isn't. A lot of it is kind of improvised,、um, or it's like, you know, pieces of dialogue that weren't even supposed to make it into the movie. It was just the actors kind of just talking amongst themselves,、mm-hmm. and they put it in the movie. Yeah, yeah, I would say it felt very natural to me.、Um, again, the foreign、yeah. language stuff were bound by the subtitles, but you know, there's some good comic relief here and there.、Um, it felt authentic. That's why I went. We, we we all are pretty close here. We just thought probably better than average, but not spectacular. Right.、Mm-hmm. My my rationale falls along the same lines as you guys. There wasn't anything stellar to me, and at the same time, there wasn't anything done poorly. So I just gave an average score.、Um, one thing I do want to point out is that. I didn't like the heavy reliance on narration, but、mm-hmm. that was it. Yeah. Let's go into the acting. Here, I give it a ninety. I gave it a sixty-five. Man, he's not liking this movie, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went with I went with an eighty. Okay. Um, for acting. When I say that, like a lot of these people were not trained actors, some of it doesn't come as a complete surprise, <laughs> you know. But for and I give it an eighty because for them not ever having any experience, like Lil Z. Was、um, not even auditioning for a role. He was just he was there just to give、uh, his friend company. <laughs> okay. And the dude ended up with the main role, and he was like pretty decent, you know. I mean, I'm gonna say, dude, for me, acting is all about like how believable they are, and these guys felt very authentic to me, very real. Even like supporting actors were pretty good. For me personally, sometimes it didn't seem believable,、uh, you know, at all. Yeah, I guess the caveat I would say is when things were a little more scripted and like、yeah. uh, part of the story, and the, you kind of needed to do it so the story progresses. Those moments kind of felt, you know, you could kind of tell they were acting, but the the stuff that's kind of filler, as in between the story, not progressing one to the next, and people are just it's like they're shooting the shit, and it just seems very authentic to me. Yeah, yeah. Those are actually the best. <laughs> those are the best moments. I I feel like. But do you think those scenes where um the acting is poor, right? Those、uh, those scenes where see, I wouldn't say it's poor. Narrative... I just would say it's like average, maybe. Okay. Right. For、yeah. me, it was poor.、Yeah. Um, okay. So those scenes in particular, do you think you can fault it on the directors for not doing a retake because they are working with amateurs, right? So. It's if it's their choice to use amateurs, they need to be more understanding and take out that time to do retakes. Because I don't fault no, I don't fault the, I don't fault anybody. Look,、okay. I don't think that the directors even knew. I don't think anybody knew how popular this movie would become. Yeah. Okay. So the, nobody knew. It was just them making it for their own audience. They were just yeah. I think they、okay. were just trying to make sort of a, a movie, with like a documentary feel about the gang war about the drug wars at that time. Because we, we know this is based off true story. Um, in the it's based off a book, right? It's based off the narrator's actual book. Yeah, I think that's what they were trying to do. I don't think that they knew how much this movie was actually going to make and how how well it was going to be received and how widespread it was going to be watched. Right? Two main actors. Yeah. So Lil Z and Rocket, like the adult ones,、uh-huh. mm-hmm. were ch- were given a choice to take like through like to get paid about like I think their conversion was like three or four thousand dollars U.S. Or to get a percentage of the box, what the box office was, and they were like, "Well, we don't know how well this movie's gonna do. Let's just take the cash, three or four thousand dollars, and that's what they got paid." <laughs> I don't、yeah. know if that's, I don't know if that's. I all hope they got, they got good that, lawyers that and like contested it. <laughs>、uh, probably not, man. They live in the favelas. Oh man. They legit live in the. These yeah, people know, are know, from know, know, the area, so. There's one、know. other thing that you mentioned, Lil Z and Rocket.、Uh, So we have like two two separate sto- or not stories but timelines, right? We have the '60s and the '70s.、Uh, the kid actors they picked for a Lil Z, who was Lil Dice then, and Rocket, they are also like casted so well that you,、right. you didn't miss a beat when they got older and they were different actors. They still felt like the same character. So I had to give、yep. props for that too. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, the casting in this, yeah, the casting was ridiculous. 
ridiculous. How do you take people who have never had any experience and then put them in a movie? Like the kids, some of the kids in this movie. The runts, yeah. The runts, like that kid that was crying in that scene. Mm -hmm. That was crazy, man. That kid had never had any acting experience. Yeah. And the and arguably the most impactful scene in the entire movie for me was that scene where the kid has zero acting and that little kid is crying when um they shoot his foot. But like that and then another scene. The thing is that they they actually thought about they did think about the acting process a lot and how to train these kids on on the proper reactions that they would get naturally from the characters. So they did something to that little kid to make him act that way. Not did something to it. You know what I'm saying. They explained they, it to him. They explained it. They taught good, him. Yeah, they taught him. Lil Dice, the kid, when he got slapped from... Um, Goose. From Goose. Yeah. They practiced that. And when that reaction is a real reaction, like he was going to leave the production because he was so pissed off mm, from that man. slap. You know, stuff like that is... Um, you have to give credence to it. So I'm, I'm kind of... I mean, act, my acting score is an 80, but... That kind of gives a lot to the process and not as, I guess it's not, you wouldn't see not that the score from skill. just the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, we can probably move on to the themes. Here I give it a 75. You give it a 65? Oh, I went with an 80. Okay. Did you guys see much going on beneath the surface? Because for me it was just... Oh, yeah. Yeah? I don't know. I, I don't know if you would say necessarily theme theme. Like there's one concrete thing outside of, you know, poverty, violence, greed, classism. G- greed is the way to excel in poverty, but eventually it'll kill you. You yeah. know, something like that. It's more about like just the uh, realization of what that environment was like. If you count that as a theme, then the city itself is is a character, right? It's mm. it's um it's more than just a place. So I think that's a pretty big theme. Yeah, yeah. Because even refer to the city as if like it's alive in itself, like its own entity. Yeah. We yeah, we didn't have much to say, I guess, because it, it it's not supposed to get into it that much thematically, right? It's just it's a story. It's yeah. a gangster story. I agree. Yeah, I mean, you're not supposed to like walk out with this movie being like, oh, I learned this lesson. <laughs> it's it's not about the lesson. It's well, about it, it's a documentary. It's not always about the of, moral you know lessons. I mean? Yeah. It's you're supposed to learn about what that environment is like. Really, you're just supposed to be, you're just supposed to watch this movie and then just be grateful that you're in America, <laughs> or anywhere else but the football. Or anywhere, well, yeah. Aesthetics. What did you guys think? I gave it an eighty. I gave it a seventy. Okay, I went with an eighty-five. Okay. I couldn't believe that this movie was made seventeen years ago. Same. Seventeen, eighteen years ago. What did you think that this movie did best in terms of like visually or audio with the audio? Um, I'm not going to speak on the color palettes, you know, because that's your thing. But um, Oh, not in this movie. Was, I didn't uh, notice much. Really? Uh, yeah. There was... So, in the 60s, you have a very warm tone. It's very, um, very golden when the favelas are first, like, newly built government housing. Um, and then you kind of see how the movie gets darker and colder, like, scene by scene, especially once it gets into the, in the Ooh, new okay. timeline. And um, yeah, the grittiness of the film choice, I think it was shot in 16 millimeter. Uh, it's very gritty. like got that documentary feel to it. Right. High contrast. Very dark. Um, I thought aesthetically it was it was great. The only reason I gave it an 80 and not higher is because of a few things we mentioned under narrative where uh, some things felt a little gimmicky with like very fast panning shots, some sound effects, uh, you know, a little bit of slow motion. that was a little random at times. Those things kind of felt a little gimmicky to me, so I went to went down to an eighty. Otherwise, I thought it was actually mm-hmm. pretty good. And music as well. I thought the music was it was yeah. all part of the scene. It wasn't um, like on top of the movie. It was you know music in the in the setting, and then it was you know amped up to be the music for the or the yeah. Score. I definitely remember liking all the music choices. Um, they mm-hmm. were really done well. Um, I I agree with you, Fraz, on everything about the visuals. I definitely didn't notice the color um, palette and how that changed throughout the movie. So I guess the early scenes were in a warm yellow tone, yep. reflecting like the optimism of what City of God could be. And then later it's just like all dark I mean, now and you can recall grimy. It, right? <laughs> yeah, I can recall it. Yeah, for sure. I appreciated um, watching the movie. It was that there was a great variety of, I, I thought there was a variety of shooting techniques. You're, and often you're kind of like you're you're meant to be a bystander because again this is a 
you, like we we talked about this documentary feel and you're not meant to you it's not in the point of view of any one particular character you're a bystander sometimes you're in the you're sort of in the point of view of rocket sometimes you're in the point of view of somebody else you know um when you're on the train the camera yeah. is shaky like you're on the train when those kids are swimming in the water you're in the water you're like floating you're treading you know water sometimes and or is you're up from the the, tr- the one kid was up in the tree so the camera was up in the tree looking down at the other kid you're they're trying to put you into the scene so i appreciated that i thought that was uh, they did a lot of that and it's um i thought it worked really well hey and i will mention like my favorite scene as far as aesthetically remember the scene where they're talking about how little dice is becoming little z and taking over the favelas and yeah. they talk about the story of the apartment and over like the mm-hmm. course of like two minutes they show like the 20 year history of the apartment and you know when little dice or little z's walking into the apartment they show that scene like three times from three different right. angles one from right, rocket's right. point of view one from um what was the other guy's name blackie uh-huh i think and, so yeah yeah and then from little dice's his own point of view so you, that was actually very creative and and i did appreciate that quite a bit but did you did you like how they cut away from this from like a, a tense moment to explaining the back story i didn't care for that i wanted to be in that moment get over the story and then maybe go back or something like that you know what i mean uh, it takes away from the i, I from can the see your point of conflict view. that they I, built up I, I can see your point of view I, I think it was an okay choice though i i appreciated that choice to cut away and give us the backstory and then proceed okay all right so i mean yeah. as far as our total scores go our tallies mine comes out to an 84 as does farans and Fahad's well, comes out is out to a sixty nine. Wow! Farn, I mean, <laughs> yeah, Fahad, a little bit man. below average. Yeah, yeah, just below average. I didn't average, like the huh? movie too much. Yeah. Uh, as far as what we thought was strongest was our narrative. Our average comes out to an eighty two. Um, mm. Writing and aesthetics were pretty close at like seventy eight. Acting and themes, oh, actually, they're all pretty close. Except themes is the is is the lowest at seventy three. So acting, writing, and aesthetics are exactly the same at seventy eight. Narrative is our high. Of 82. And that's even with Fahad giving it a, a low score of 65. Mm, interesting. Right. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know if... Uh, this is, for me, one of the better movies from that time period. Um, yeah, actually, no. Talk about that far. And how you said it didn't feel like an 18-year-old movie to to you. And it didn't not to at me all. either, right? Like, it doesn't no. age... I mean, it ages very well. But you're right. It, it ages really well. And I think a, uh, a lot of that is because of... You, we're always talking about the process, right? And I'm being able to see the process. And some of this you can in here, but a lot of it's forgivable once you... They make it engaging, you know? And that, that a lot of that goes to the directing. I mean, this is a two-hour long movie. And to me, it did not seem like it was dragging at all. It's engaging because they use a variety of storytelling techniques. They use a variety of shooting techniques. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a variety in tone. There's a variety in mood even the level of violence they scale it up at some points and they scale it back down you know yeah um so it's just got it keeps you engaged throughout the entire you know uh, 120 minutes yeah and i think that's why both of our narrative scores are as high as they are yeah i felt like the film was glamorizing violence um it mm. was relishing in people's deaths and I, th- I thought that was extremely distasteful. Really? Really? Yeah, yeah. I don't. I did not see it glamorizing violence whatsoever. Oh, hot. Have you seen Kill Bill? <laughs> yes, and it does. Have you that... seen Hostel? No, Kill Bill does it more for sure. But it's it's also got in that terms of tone. glamorizing the violence. Kill Bill. I think, Kill Bill I think goes it... into a campy territory, right? This yeah. movie sticks with realism, and it still celebrates violence. That's what I don't think so. I don't think it's, yeah. I I can, uh, so here, here's what I will, uh, here's what I'll say on this subject. I think you need to rewatch this movie, man. (laughs) 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 Um, they're not glamorizing violence at all. That's completely, completely, completely outside of the what they're doing is they're trying to, again, they're putting you in the shoes of a bystander in the favela. Violence is that prevalent there yeah, it's part especially of in this life. time period they're not glamorizing it they're making this real they're making the situation real that for the for the characters themselves this is such an everyday thing that it doesn't even phase them they're desensitized to it like that kid said i'm i robbed i've killed i'm an adult and he's like nine years old 
Yeah. Right? Like, there's little kids running around with guns, shooting people. That's just the nature of the environment there, right? So they're not glamorizing the violence. What they're doing is giving you insight as a viewer into how desensitized all these other characters are. Well, like this whole this whole city is. But how, what about the city this, of God specifically? What about uh, the scene that Farhan mentioned? Mm-hmm. The the kid, the same kid that Farhan just quoted too, where he says, "I've killed, I've robbed, um, I'm an adult." His he's, his name is and, Stake, and, right? And then his friends laugh at him, right? Yeah, but like it, Stake is the one when he gets initiated to the gang, he's the one who has to kill between the two kids, right? Yeah. Low dice, um, or low Z shoots the two kids in the foot, and then he gives the gun to Stake and it's like, "Hey, you got to kill one of the two. and right, he kills yeah. the older of the two. How did that scene at all? Show, like, if it's the total opposite of glamorizing violence, it was impactful. Yeah. Like well, Barnes said, I wasn't thinking of other that scene particularly. I was thinking of other scenes where it seems like. The characters themselves are giddy and killing people, and then well, like the tone of the yeah, movie the is like a little bit weird. Like, if yeah, but that's the char- that's the whole point, right? Lil Z is an evil dude. Well, it's, it's not demonic. just Lil Z; it's other it's other characters as well. Who I well, don't remember the like, names. Like Stake, right? Because Stake becomes yeah. hardened. But look, but you saw the apprehension during that initiation phase, and then he becomes oh, sure, hardened that scene, going yeah, yeah. forward. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I guess he's just an example of all the other kids, like how it starts. And then mm-hmm. how it ends, um, like where where they are kind of innocent, they kind of know what they're doing is wrong, to the point where like it's totally mindless violence, and they just they just do it. It's just part of life. If you want to talk about a theme, I mean, this is kind of going into that, right? Yeah. Violence breeds violence. Mm-hmm. But but and the so, film also shows violence getting the characters what they want, right? It's right. But that's the whole point end. is that this that's what that's what it is in the favela because these people are so poor they have no out. This is their only. This is their only way to succeed. Like, look at Knockout Ed, right? Like, he was Ned. just normal dude. He was an adult, just living his vi- his living his life, and violence crept on his door, and he had no choice but to accept it and embrace it if he was gonna go any further. That's the sad reality of this place. The kids, the runts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even with that scene with Knockout Ned, when he is initially like brought into the violent nature of the gangs. Um, like his little brother, an innocent person, gets killed. I mean, innocent mm-hmm. maybe not because he stabs little Z. Um, but then even when they're shooting up the house, they show his grandfather or father. I don't know, like yeah. knockout Ned, someone like someone in his family member gets shot right while they're just sitting on the couch. So they constantly are showing how innocent people are, like you know, receiving the brunt of the violence when they have mm-hmm. nothing to do with it. And it's just like Farn said, it creeps into everyone's life. Yeah. yeah if you want to talk about like. Movies that glamorize violence, man. I mean, this is definitely not. They make it a they they don't make it a point to be like, look, this is good. All this that's happening, that's good. The fact that people are getting further with violence doesn't mean that's not. They're not making a statement about the violence themselves. They're making the statement about the hierarchy of um, violence in these people's lives. Like, look at dude. Look at Scarface. <laughs> yeah. The last scene of Scarface. That's glamorizing violence, right? Like movies. I don't know, I'm trying to think of it. Other I mean, movies that do that Tarantino kind of thing. movie. <laughs> yeah, any Quarantino movie glamorizes <laughs> Quarantino. violence. Quarantino. I don't care what you say, <laughs> but he does it artfully. Tarantino, not quarantine. <laughs> quarantine? Did I say quarantine? Yeah, Quarantino. You said Quarantino. <laughs> Quarantino, dude. That should be his. That should be his name. Yeah, we should put um, him in quarantine. Tarantino. <laughs> Why did I say Quarantino? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All right, keep going, keep going. I've been in quarantine too long. Tarantino glamorizes violence. He does it artfully, but no question. Inglorious Bastards? Yeah. Are you kidding me, dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he glamorizes for violence. Sure, for sure he does. Yeah. Um, but it works in but, his films. And, and it's not right? wrong. He does it great. He does it, what, he does it really well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I would also say when I mentioned how City of God is, is, is its own entity, when people are even trying to escape the violence. So when Shaggy is trying to escape in the 60s with his uh, girlfriend, Bernice, he gets shot and killed. When uh, Bene is trying to leave the life with Angelica, he is, and he's not even the target, but he gets shot and killed, right? At his Mm -hmm. going away party. Basically, you can't even escape it when you want to. Like that's, so I don't think it's glamorizing it. It's just, it's showing the tragedy of violence. Mm. That's a good way of saying it, yeah. Okay, yeah. I can see your point of view. Violence breeds violence. What Farin said, the city 
it's kind of like The Wire. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it's a cycle, right? It's cyclical. It's not going to just end. And um, and it only gets worse like with each iteration. So like the movie starts with the tender trio. These guys are like small ragtag, you know, criminals. They're only like they're doing small holdups, just getting some cash. They're not killing anyone. Um, it's little little dice, right, who goes out and kills the people at the motel that kind of dooms the tender trio. Like Shaggy, like we said, he gets shot and killed when he tries to leave. Clipper goes to the church to um, redeem himself. And then uh, Rocket's older brother, Goose, also gets killed by uh, Little Dice when he's trying to leave the City of God. But then Little Dice and Carrot are the ones running the show. And then when, even when Little Dice or Lil Z, when Lil Z gets killed at the very end, the runs are the ones that take over, right? And mm -hmm. presumably they're even more ruthless because Lil Z at least had some code where he, w he didn't want to disturb the residents. He didn't want to disturb like, you know, local businesses. He just wanted to, you know, run the streets and uh, run the drug he, trade. He just wanted the power. Yeah, he just wanted the power. He 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 generally seemed like an advocate for peace as long as he had the power. The only reason they go to war is because Carrot owns or runs a, a, a separate neighborhood and he, he just wants control of that as well. But mm -hmm. he, I mean, that whole scene with the kid and State getting initiated by killing one of the two kids is because those kids were robbing a local bakery. And he's like, you can't be robbing bakeries you know, in my town. The reason he doesn't care about the bakeries, he doesn't care about the people. The reason is because they brought police. And it's yeah, bad and for it brings business. unwanted yeah. attention. Yeah. That was only that was. But a, even then, like it only means it's because otherwise he's like Walmart, dude. <laughs> he's already got a relationship with the police, right? That we get that uh, at the very end where he's been paying off the police, which we kind of knew. But yeah, more unwanted attention from the police would mean that he has to pay off even more police. Uh, mm -hmm. So he doesn't want to do that, obviously. But like the police are just as much in on it um, in this corrupted world as anyone yeah. else. Uh, like otherwise, it wouldn't thrive or wouldn't it wouldn't exist in the condition that it is. Mm. Oh, I didn't realize this in my first like few watches, but I did this time. So what we see in the '60s, like it's the very beginning of the favela, right? Like the the construction of it. I didn't realize that's actually the same exact place for the story you know 10 20 years later really no, it is it is the streets are just paved now electricity has been brought in and it's just gotten more crowded so the multiple story buildings and like yep. everything interesting really yeah because the spacing of the streets early on in the 60s the streets were so big and yep, i don't know yep. so i guess everything was like raised over and built up again I, like, I mean they just paved the roads and they built more buildings closer together and built on top of each other building mm, interesting okay. but yeah i didn't realize that until this time i mean i actually like, look because his uh narration kind of alludes that's the same place because they never leave the city of god right how like he's calling the first place in the 60s city of god and he's calling the place in the 70s city of god as well like how could it be two separate places and then i looked it up and then yes i just assumed the like place. they built up like a bigger city just like right next door to where the no, original it's, houses it's were? just the it's just the maturation of the the government projects really interesting i didn't even even thought about that that's crazy it is crazy i mean it's, it's, it shows like how uh how accelerated it was really because it you're right it looks like it was a completely different place that's what i was i was like okay they moved to the city and then one of my questions was going to be what happened to these people's families and uh, that that's one of my gripes with it is that the ne we never know what happens to rocket's family and where his parents even are like where does he even live does he live with his parents still like what's going they're, on I, I assume they're honest workers they're just you know living their day-to-day -day life yeah. you know in in poverty this, yeah, I mean, I, there, there's too much to go into if they had to involve, like, family right, life right, yeah. of each of these kids. Yeah. But he talks about everybody else's family. He doesn't even mention his own. I mean, he kind of does. He, he mentions how, like, when he met Lil Z for the first time after a while, that he could have avenged his brother's death. Well, that's one thing I didn't like, how Rocket just knew everything. He was, like, the yeah all-knowing. <laughs> yeah, who knew that? Uh, he, exactly, yeah. How would he know that he shot Goose? Yeah, how would he know, right? That's the first thing I thought. But also, one thing I saw about this movie... So obviously Rio de Janeiro, one thing, like the one symbol that everyone knows throughout the world is that Christ the Redeemer statue, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. on top of the mountain, yeah. right? And it's like notably absent mm -hmm. from this film, mm -hmm. as in like, like there is nothing to redeem or like it's unredeemable. Did they ever shoot that same location? Well, they sh they have a few scenes on the beach, right? 
Um, and it's supposed to be visible from there? Yeah, like, I guess if they zoomed out a bit, you would have been able I to see it. I do remember one scene on the beach where we see mountains in the back, but then there's a uh, yeah. there's clouds. But it says there's cut clouds off, actually think. hiding like the upper um trenches of the the, the hills, yeah. The peaks. I don't remember seeing it at all. No, it, it isn't in the movie. Yeah, and for I think sure. that's purposeful too. And they they mention that a yeah. lot throughout the movie. They have dialogues along the lines of like, "Why would you come to the city of God that doesn't have doesn't have a god or something like that?" You know, they say that several times. So I mean, obviously, yeah, that's purposeful absence of Christ. Is that the right thing to say? You know, what I'm trying yeah, to say a purposeful absence. Of purposeful omission. What omission or what, omission? What's omission. Omission. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the whole thing, too. Like, when you think of Rio, it's uh, the most famous city in Brazil. And people go there as tourists and all of that stuff, right? Yeah, it's like a party it's town. It's a party town. And yeah. behind that, you know, veil is this, the favelas. Mm-hmm. Which they try to hide, right? Right. Yeah. And I mean, that's true for any city. Yeah. But, yeah, even Rocket mentions it where he's like, they built this the projects, you know, far from the eye of the city. So, like, people just can't... Obviously, literally, as in they're probably far from the center of the city, but also um, that they're just not visible. So the tourists aren't bothered? Yeah, like, like they can't see the condition that yeah. the, the, these people are living in. Yeah. You guys want to talk anything about Rocket as far as the character? I mean, I know, Fahad, you mentioned you just didn't like his story. I thought he was a pretty cool <laughs> protagonist. It's not that I didn't like his story... Well, it's it, it didn't deserve like it wasn't interesting enough to me to be like the main perspective. I don't know. Yeah, mm. I mean, I really like. I think he like provided relief from like the gritty violence, and you kind of need that sometimes in this movie, or else it'll be just one violent scene after another. And like Lil Z was so unpredictable that if it's only him on screen the whole time, it would just be like yeah, way too. Ang- I'd be way too anxious yeah. the whole time. Yeah. Like, what's he going to do? He's unpredictable. He might just kill someone. But with Rocket, I mean, Rocket, like, what does he say? He's like, I don't want to be a hood. I don't want to be a policeman because I'm scared of getting shot. Mm. Um, but then, like, mm-hmm. when he's getting frustrated at not making enough money after, like, working at the grocery store and he wants to, like, rob someone, but everyone he comes across is just too cool to yeah, rob. Yeah, yeah, First yeah. is knock out Ned, right? <laughs> knock out Ned on the bus is too cool. Well, the funny, the funny part about that scene, too, where he's like, they're thinking about robbing him, and then Knockout Nuts like, "Yeah, I was a marksman, and the, yeah. and I also and black belt in karate. karate and all this stuff." <laughs> and they're like, "Well, thank God, we didn't try to rob the guy." <laughs> and then they go to uh, like a bakery, and then this chick is yeah. there that he starts flirting yeah, with. She He's like, yeah, "She's too cool to rob." Yeah. <laughs> I think, oh, there's this dude from Sao Paulo. We'll rob him because there's no one cool from there. Yeah. And then they end up like smoking weed with him, and they're like, "Man, you're the coolest guy I know from South Park." So funny. Yeah, it was funny, man. I li- I liked Rocket quite a bit. Yeah. I mean, he was just yeah. like an easygoing guy, and then like obviously him, like he was he was like the steady hand because even Lo Z gets along with him, Bene gets along with him, Angelica gets along with him. Everyone just gets along with him, so he's kind of like a neutral observer, which makes like for the perfect character for us to follow right. around to get everyone's point of view. Yeah, cool. Is that it, folks? Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you're listening to the discussion part, hopefully you've already seen the movie. I wouldn't even say that there's any crazy spoilers in this movie, anyway. Not really. Yeah, a lot I mean, of it is kind of predictable for sure, but you know what you're getting into. And with the violence being cyclical, yeah, yeah. you know where you're going. You know, like. It's it's only gonna start up again if if yeah. anyone mm-hmm. goes down. I mean, I, I did kind of yeah. like that thread of the story where like Bene was like the the peacemaker that was holding everything together before the all out war. Um, just because I think he was one of my favorite actors in this movie. I mean, he really was just pretty cool, right? <laughs> like, yeah, uh, laid back. What do they he calls himself mm-hmm. a hippie and um, yeah. and rational? Like he's like we never see Bene actually kill anyone. No, yeah, he's like one of those people who. He doesn't resort to violence to make ends meet. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I will say one thing I really didn't like is knock out Ned's death. Uh, like him being killed by that kid because yeah, yeah, that yeah. was a little forced. And a little, that was yeah, dumb. It was, it was, uh, that came out of nowhere <laughs> and that was dumb yeah. for sure. 100%. That was a little too <laughs> dramatic for me. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll leave it there. Yeah, we'll leave All it right. there. Thanks everyone for listening. Peace. Thanks for listening to this production of The Twice Over. 
If you enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing and sharing it with a friend. Want to see what your tally is? Check out thetwiceover.com. All the movies we've done are listed there, as well as what we're watching for the current week. Follow us at The Twice Over on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, where you can leave us any suggestions, feedback, or comments. And if you're about it, you can also support us on Patreon. The music you hear on this podcast is from Amerigo Gazaway. You can find his work on Bandcamp and Spotify.